Good evening, everybody. Chef Marshall O'Brien here, and welcome to Cooking with Confidence. Super excited to have you all here. It's been it's been a great week. Thursday evening, 5:30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Really excited to get into today's recipe. We got a mountain of Brussels sprouts to get awesome with, but before we do that, please make sure that you are liking our fan page. Make sure that you are subscribing to our YouTube channel. So if you can't be cooking with us in real time tonight, I hope you can, because it's a lot of fun. But if you can't, do it on demand on our YouTube channel, Chef Marshall's Cooking with Confidence. Make sure you're also following us on Instagram. Thank you so much. Well. Super happy to have you here tonight. We do have an excellent recipe, and I'll tell you in just a second. But we put the show together for, for three, four things, pardon me. Number one is to give you a positive experience for yourself or whoever's in your world uh, at least one night a week. Number two, I want to help you improve your skills and confidence in the kitchen. Number three, help you take some, put some sanity in your life with uh, easy meal planning. And number four, provide you great tasting foods, teach you how to nourish yourself, not just feed yourself. So that's the whole mission of our show. We've got an awesome crew, Miss Jana, my right-hand gal, on uh, taking questions. She'll be, for those of you that are watching live, uh, when you ask the question, she'll relay it out and we'll take care of you. It's super cool. i got Alex and Gabriel rocking it in the back. I uh, thank you guys so much. So, all right, tonight's recipe, folks. We've got a lemon fettuccine with caramelized sprouts. Uh, I've had a lot of people that are vegetarians and are excited about this. People who are vegans are excited. I got folks that are not either of those excited about this. And I did hear the joke that uh, that Brussels sprouts are best served with a racket. Anybody know what that's about? You know the reference? You know, okay, tennis racket served Brussels sprouts. Well, anyways, it's a great recipe. For this recipe tonight, for this recipe, we are working with Brussels sprouts, lemon. We got some fresh mint garlic. Little crushed chili pepper, little salt and pepper, olive oil, and of course we've got some fettuccine noodles. Uh, I, I can't tell you how easy this is. Uh, probably the hardest part of this whole recipe was breaking down the Brussels sprouts. And here's a secret, folks. You can buy frozen Brussels sprouts ready to go so you don't have to monkey around with them. But there's a reason why we prepped them the way we did, and we'll talk about that very shortly. What's the first thing we talk about when you're going to cook up a great meal for yourself in your kitchen? Recipes. Well, you don't have to have a recipe, but let's just say that that's not your strong suit, but you want to be making nourishing foods for yourself. Well, make sure you have that recipe. And if you sign up, like maybe you're watching going, what's this guy talking about? Go to chefmarshallobrien.com slash show so you can get the recipes in advance and you can cook with us in real time. Otherwise, just go to our YouTube channel and please subscribe. The more subscribers we have, the more production capabilities will be unlocked thanks to that whole algorithmic magic and we can be providing you more stuff on YouTube as well. But having said that, having your recipe, having, you know, in your mise en place, your ingredients, you don't have to do a nice fancy presentation, but I did tonight for you. Want to make sure you have a knife cutting board, got your pans and all that. You know, we're going to do it all at once for you, meaning going to cook the pasta right here, make the dish right here. You could certainly make the pasta in advance, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm heating that up. Good afternoon, everybody. Who do we have on today? Who, any questions, comments, who's saying hi? Anyways, Teresa, uh, Teresa, Sharon, Cindy. Sharon, Cindy, awesome. So glad to have you. Tess. Tess, awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, I've got my pasta heating up here for, got the pasta water heating up. Add a little salt in there to give some flavor for our pasta. And now I am heating up my pan. It's always important to preheat your pan just ever so slightly. If you crank up the heat blazing nuts on that pan, you could warp your pan. And I, at my house, I have an electric cooktop and a flat pan is critical. Otherwise, if it's warped, well, then it wobbles on there and then you create heat spots and it could be problematic. So make sure that you just slightly preheat your pan, warm it up, and after about 30 seconds, then you can take it to the temperature that you want. While the pan's getting hot and our water is heating up, talked about them Brussels sprouts. All right. You know, some folks aren't big fans of Brussels sprouts, and that's okay. That's why I want you to be trying new things. You know, I'm not a fan of broiled Brussels sprouts. For you Midwest folks, boiled Brussels sprouts, I think, was a common thing, and that just sounds not too appealing, so I can understand why there might be an aversion to them at this day and age. Well, roasted Brussels sprouts are awesome. Caramelized Brussels sprouts, like we're going to do, is super awesome as well. But you need to make sure that you have 
you have Brussels sprouts prepped. And as you can see here, folks, I took the time, and I'm going to show you how to do it too, but I, you know, I cut the bottoms, and I'm going to do it in a second, and I, and I quarter them so they're bite-sized because we want to be able to get them nice and caramelized, and it's going to help make them tender quicker that way as well to achieve what we want. With a Brussels sprout, this is part of the cruciferous family, and I'll spare you the nutritional geek out details here, but this is related to cabbage, it's related to Brussels sprouts, it's related to cauliflower. If your digestive system aren't, is not used to these types of greens, take it in baby steps, and then once you, your body gets acclimated to them, these are fantastic, good slow carbohydrate food, helps keep the blood sugar stable, that's a good thing, another conversation. Okay. I took one of my little paring utility knives. I think that's the easiest way to break down your Brussels sprouts. You could try using a big honking knife, but I don't know that that's the right tool for this job. That's my experience. And a little tip. This is going to be sort of an obvious tip, but it's a really good tip for you. Get someone to help you if you can. It'll make it twice as fast, okay? So as I was saying, we, we trimmed off the the end of the Brussels sprout and there's some just think about that 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 end has been sitting on the stock and then it, when it was taken off the stock and packaged up harvested and packed you know packed up to the grocery stores those tips get old they're woody they're fibrous you don't you know it doesn't taste good you don't want it it's not palatable so we, tr we trim it off and then in my hand very carefully I'm just quartering it just like that if you feel more comfortable, ladies and gentlemen, Jana, certainly chime in if you want to say something. Okay, I'm. If you, go ahead. <laughs> doing it. Teresa says I'm making half Brussels sprouts and half asparagus. Oh, very cool. Teresa, suggestion for you on that: the asparagus will cook half as it'll cook. It'll take half as long to cook, so you'll want to put your your asparagus in there, uh, a, you yeah. know, halfway through, if you will. I, okay, you just made my day, Teresa, because this is the whole point of the show is to get all of you to you know, try new things in your kitchen, um, help you make great tasting and nourishing foods, you know, to get your dinner on the table. Something is burning, and what would that be? I have no idea. Okay, well, oh, I smell something burning. Don't know what it is yet. If we find some extra flames, it'll be an extra surprise. So we're just going to keep moving forward. Uh, but that's the whole point of the show, and I'm excited about I know, that's on by design, but thank you for noticing that. <laughs> I have it on low. All right, back to the Brussels sprouts. You know, I'm kind of a squirrel. Hey, what's going on? So that was a good example. Um, I've trimmed the bottom. If you want to take another approach, again, trimming the bottom here, if you want to even just do it like this. So I, I take it back. You can use a big knife here. And, and then what you can do is using your big, you know, you're going to have to, again, it's, there's a little manual dexterity that's involved here, but this is good knife skills practice. It's going to help you with your confidence. For those of you that are not comfortable with the knife, the more you use the knife, the more comfortable you're going to get, and that's important to ensure that you can do this with success and ease, and I want you to do that. You've seen two ways now that I can do, you can do this, either with your little utility paring knife. Now, paring knife, utility knife are different, but for you know, more or less of the same thing for what we're trying to accomplish. Or you can use it with your big uh, cook's knife, as you can see. I want surface area on my Brussels sprouts. I want surface area on my Brussels sprouts. That's really important. That's why we're quartering them up, and it'll also help them cook a bit faster. Our pasta water is just about ready. I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that continue to cook. Questions, comments, thoughts? Yes. BK Bolin wants to know, how can I make my garlic last longer? Can he put it in the refrigerator? Yes, you may put it in the refrigerator. What you will find is when you leave your garlic out. Now, there's different philosophies on this, but I'm a utilitarian. I'm, a, I'm, I'm practical. And if put in your garlic in your refrigerator so it stays fresher longer and you will continue to use it and get the benefits of the flavor and all the good stuff that comes associated with it, I think that's okay. My point is, is when you leave garlic out, well, it is going to continue to continue to ripen and eventually there'll be some stems that will pop out and you'll see that if you have a little sack of garlic in in your kitchen somewhere it's just like with onions they start to grow stems after a while so if you put the garlic in the refrigerator that is totally cool that's acceptable if anyone wants to yell, be, uh, yell about it you can yell at me uh, you know I, I get it um, but I do that all right pasta water is ready make sure 
that you don't stick your face above the pot before you open it. Otherwise, you're going to get a facial. It might feel good. would be funny for you, not for me. Uh, just want to make sure that you're safe. And you can see I got a lot of, it's kind of clunky around here because I'm going to show some tools and whatnot. And I'm going to be straining, I'm going to be uh, uh, using a little gizmo, like a little contraption to strain my pasta and reserve some of the water. So we talk about using fettuccine. I, you can use your regular fettuccine. I wanted to have a whole grain option and I actually could only find linguine because it's just a little smaller version of the fettuccine. So you know what? That's just kind of the way it is. Like sort of like to Teresa's point, she used half, she used half of the Brussels sprouts and half of uh, asparagus and that's okay. You know, as long as you're going in a positive direction, that's what I want you to be doing in that positive direction. It's taking care of yourself in the kitchen. That's okay. what we're doing tonight. Question. Okay. Well, Shelly yes. Shelley wants to know, why yes. are your Brussels sprouts so fluffy? Yeah, that's a really good question, <laughs> Shelly. Uh, and no, and, and all jokes aside, I was actually thinking about that. You know, different, you know, different uh I'm, I'm, i don't want to overanalyze this but just sometimes you're going to get brussels sprouts that are a little more compact some are a little more fluffy i think it really just comes down to the region the season the harvest time you know they're from a nutritional value they're great from a brussels sprouts flavor they're still great yeah it's just kind of that's nature there we go the better answer for you the better answer is nature is going to give it what it gives you and sometimes you're going to get different shapes and it's not going to change the. Uh, it's not going to change the the flavor and all that fun stuff. Okay, next, I heated my pan up more than enough. I have it on low. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit here to a medium to medium high. Now, in the recipe, folks, if you don't have the recipe, please make sure you sign up so you can have the recipes and cook with us. ChefMarshallO'Brien.com/show. Get the recipe shopping list in advance. The recipe says to use olive oil, cook medium high heat. Got to be careful with olive oil because olive oil is not a high heat. It's not a, it doesn't have a high, it's not a, doesn't have a high smoke point. And people tend to use it at super high heats and then, you know, you, you, you uh, wreck the, that's definitely hot now because some water splattered on there. But you can, you can burn it up. So where I'm going with this is watch your temp. You can always, if you feel like substituting for a coconut oil, you could substitute for that. If you have ghee, which is basically uh, another, it's, it's uh, basically clarified butter, it, but you could use that. Um, so just be careful that you don't have it too high. Otherwise, your, you know, your olive oil is going gonna, is gonna to be, uh, be toast. Okay, I'm going to add some olive oil into my pan, and I know the pan is hot because it's it's kind of shimmering as you can see see how it's got that little uh wavy lines and we're going to get the brussels sprouts in there we got Hi. this yeah are you okay <laughs> that was a joke okay all right but it's wow. good that you are paying attention folks because if you were to have a lot of oil in a hot pan and you just put that in there it could splatter you could injure somebody and and I love having kids participate. I love having par family participate. You just want to make sure that everybody's safe. So if you are doing this with other people, you pour away from yourself. And I poured away from me, but I poured it towards Jana, and she was fine. She was joking. But you want to make sure that you think about those things, especially if you're, you know, kind of uh, growing your wings in the kitchen more, as, uh, if you will. Just to make, I want to make sure that you're safe. Is all I'm trying to say. All right, questions, comments, thoughts. Uh, let's see. Tess. Oh, Bay K. Molin is red lentil rotini in Etar House. They're doing with red lentil. Red lentil rotini. Okay, we're going gluten free options. Totally cool. I used a whole grain option. Uh, if you have a gluten sensitivity, by all means, you know, I want you to be comfortable. There are a lot of different options out there from the red lentil rotini to quinoa pasta, corn pasta, brown rice pasta. We do cook with a lot of brown rice pasta at home and a little bit. We're weaning ourselves off of, of, off of relying on gluten products just because of sometimes there's some irritation from an eczema standpoint with my youngest daughter and I have a bit of some digestive sensitivity. So gluten oftentimes can be one of those items that if you get it out, it usually can help with that. But that's a great, uh, thank you for BK for commenting on that. Now you notice I'm using either my spoon to stir or I'm just using the, uh, a quick 
push and pull motion here. We're getting bright color. We're already getting some nice brown marks here. Put on camera three here. I want to show what that looks like. See, we're getting some nice color on there. That's exactly what we want. We're going to let this continue to cook. We got a lot of sprouts in the pan, but as they cook, they'll soften up, they'll reduce, because there's a lot of water in there. I know you think Brussels sprouts, you think, you know, it's a hard vegetable, but there's still probably over 90% water. A lot of water. Going to let that continue to cook. Our pasta is going here. Questions, comments, thoughts? Test. Folks, oh, go ahead. Go Sorry. ahead. I was just going to say, make sure, folks, for those of you that just chimed in, chefmarshallobrine.com slash show so that you can get our shopping lists and recipes in advance to participate with us, or you can go on demand uh, on our YouTube channel. The more people subscribe, please go there right now. Go to YouTube, Chef Marshall's Cooking with Confidence, and subscribe. We want those subscribers so that we can get our the, there's production capabilities that will get unlocked as we get more subscribers. So please help us out and do that. Um, to get the recipes, get the shopping list. All right. You were going to say something, Jana. Go for it. Uh, That's hot. Tess has a couple... Let's see what the first one was. I talked about being prepared. Make sure you have hot pads or whatever oh, you need for that. Tess was saying making Brussels sprouts salad with vinaig vinaigrette is also great. She Can I just riff on that for two seconds? I love that idea. Now, here's something, folks. I want you to listen up. If you, if you like the idea of exploring and branching out with your, with your culinary creations, like, like Tess, was that Tess that said that? Tess. Uh, so, like, especially with whether it's cabbage or broccoli or Brussels sprouts in this case, Make sure that you thinly slice those, those foods so that when you put the, vin the vinaigrette and you toss it up, that vinaigrette can help break down the cells of the vegetables so that they'll be nice and tender and palatable. I'm, I, I don't want to make any assumptions, but I'm kind of assuming that the Brussels sprouts might be raw. Tess, let us know in that case. And then if they are raw, again, shaving them, making them thin, you know, thinly sliced is going to help make sure that, that they have a nice texture when you're ready to have it. Okay, next what we want to do is we got to continue to cook these guys. Dominic says, just finished, very lemony and basil smelling. And ba lemony and basil, love it. Oh, you added basil. I think I saw one of your pictures. I love that, that you did that, Dominic. Dominic, please make sure that you take a picture of what you made and let us know how it turned out. Folks, that's one of the things is we want to be able to acknowledge you when you do these, when you do the recipes and put that effort in there so that we can give you shout outs, which we'll be doing later on in the show. All right, pasta's been going for, I don't know, what, about uh, seven minutes, and it's still a little firm, but getting close. It's always good. Try your food. If, if you're new to cooking and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to totally follow this recipe, and I just got to be totally, you know, I'm just like really into it, that's great. But make sure that you taste as you go. So, you know, like I said, I taste the pasta. I could just tell by the feel that I knew it wasn't ready yet. It's still fairly crunchy and now it's of course stuck in my teeth um but taste it taste it as you go and then like i like how dominic mentioned you know he's smelling the herbs that he used you know cooking's all about awareness it's all about the senses and so he's noticing the aroma that comes off of that dish and i want you to be aware of that now we use mint in here mint is a, a perennial weed it's awesome but if you don't want to use mint use basil Okay, that would be fantastic. It's going to add a lot of flavor. You see how we're getting some beautiful color and we're getting just some nice, 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 nice color on Tess that. Tess added that sometimes raw, sliced with mandolin, let it sit in vinaigrette for a bit before eating. Wonderful. That's really cool. I love it. So I mentioned about thinly slicing the, uh, the Brussels sprouts. If you were to make that Brussels sprout salad that Tess was commenting, she's using a device called a mandolin. For you chef home cook folks out there, you probably have one of those. They're a great tool. Uh, obviously, if you're, um, if you're, you know, you got to be careful with them because they're sharp and you could potentially uh, cut yourself. I, I've done it before, not fun, but that's a great way. You know, speaking of that, what are some things you can do to speed up the process of this? Maybe you buy frozen Brussels sprouts, so then it takes less time because they're already softened once they heat up. You know, you're going to have a little bit of a different texture on there, but maybe, you, you know, whatever it takes to help you create great tasting, nourishing meals for you and your family. So you could be using frozen, the frozen vegetables. Maybe you cooked your pasta in advance. There's nothing wrong with that. And make sure that you save the pasta water because we'll be using that. 
But I just want to get all the barriers out of the way so that you can get these great tasting foods into your life. All right, next what I'm going to do is while I've got the pasta going, and we're probably you know a couple minutes left on here, I'm going to uh, smash some of the garlic so we can mince it up and put it in there. I had uh, BK, one of our... One, uh, one of you folks uh, before the show sent a picture, a video actually, of your of your garlic peeler. That was so cool. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm and uh, you know use whatever tools that you have to make it easy for yourself. I was doing a webinar yesterday, and I wanted to show another way that you can get the easily get the paper off the off the garlic to come off. And my demonstration didn't work, but it does work because I've used it. But point being, whatever it takes. You know, I like to prep garlic in advance. I have it in the freezer. It's all minced, ready to go. You can do that. I happen to like to cook. It's sort of meditative for me. It's fun. It's just a way for me to, you know, to relax and to, I feel, you know, when I'm contributing to my, to my family's well-being and giving them great tasting foods, I like to do it. But if you're not as romantic about it as I am, that's okay. But you still want to do it, figure out ways to make it easier for yourself. All right, we've got our garlic ready. We're not going to put it in quite yet because I'm still having these. I'm still having the the Brussels sprouts get nice and charred and caramelized. You know, caramelized, charred and caramelization. Char being caramelized and being charred are, uh, you know, charred is going to be darker, a little more robust in the flavor. That would be burned. For me. That would be potential well, for you to be burned. Um, this is a little bit of cross between both, but I did that by design. It looks great. I'm actually going to turn the heat down just a little bit here. And these are, these are looking exactly the way we want. All right. Questions, comments, thoughts? Teresa says she also added pan-fried chicken tenders for my kiddos. Oh, very cool. Which, that actually, uh, pardon me here. All right. Pasta is just about done. That's one of the things that I also want you to think about. Whether you're doing half of this vegetable or half of that vegetable, you switch up this herb for that herb like Dominic did. Adding, you know, add some chicken tenders. Add, you know, adding other things to it is totally cool. Cooking is an art, whereas baking is a science. So you get inspired by creating something and providing, you know, a little nuance to it is absolutely okay. All right, speaking of absolutely okay, we are going to cut up some lemons. And these are some, like, bohemian lemons. And something I want to comment on, when it comes to juicing citrus, whether it's lemons or limes, there's a variety of ways that you can go about doing it. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit here. You can use one of these, you know, uh, a citrus reamer here. You've got the juicer. I am blanking on what you call these things. Somebody in the comments let me know. I, I forgot. Great devices. Use it all the time. This is a great device. Use it all the time. Figure out what works for you. Certainly can just use a fork and then squeeze it into the fork. Um, but we want to juice. We're going to juice about a quarter of a cup. And since these are like the size of oranges, we might even get our quarter of a cup right there. One comment I have about using citrus, well, a couple comments, is citrus, you don't need a lot of salt. And you notice in the recipe that I have like an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, right? That's half a quarter of a teaspoon. It's not a lot of salt. And that's because our lemon juice brings out so much flavor. It's going to bring all this flavor, and like Dominic said, it's lemony, and that's the whole point, okay? Dominic, by the way, I hope you liked it, all right? Let me know. Um, but the flavor from the lemon, and then you don't have to add as much sodium. If you have sodium sensitivities, when your body needs sodium, don't get me wrong, but if you have, you know, if you're eating a lot of packaged processed foods, speaking of which, I'm going off, I'm digressing. Yesterday morning, I did a segment on, on our local Fox channel TV station, and I talked about... Uh, getting excess salt and added sugar out of your life. Point is, you can use citrus and you don't have to use as much salt then, which is really slick. So we're going we're gonna to do just that. Uh, let's see, how much do we have? Oh, I bet we have a quarter of a cup. Awesome. Nothing wrong with measuring it out. Measure it out to see where you're at. And I'm measuring. Look at that. We got a quarter of a cup. If it's, you can always add flavor. You can't take it away. So if you're if you're saying, well, okay, I know I'm making lemon fettuccine, but I don't know if I'm a big lemon fan. Well, maybe you add a quarter of it to start. You know, add a, just phase it in, and then that way you know how it's going to be. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pull out the pasta. 
It's really important for this recipe just to get the flavor and the, um, you know, using that pasta water, we're going to save, we're going to save about a cup of it. And I'm going to take out, you know what, I've got all sorts of little tools and stuff. I'm going to grab, this is not a pasta scooper, but it works a heck of a lot better than my pasta scooper. No offense to Epicurean. I love you guys. You rock. But I'm going to go with this guy. I want to get the pasta out. Now, you know what you can do? Forget that. I'm actually just going to pour it into the pot, hence the hot pad and all the ways to set. Okay, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Let me grab one more. Uh... All right, check it out. I got to get organized. We're just... Yep, I'm going to not pour it towards you. Okay, we're good. We are all good to go there. Let's move this out of the way. Questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? anything this looks beautiful okay and we have pasta water and that's what we want so we're good there okay rosie yes is here okay rosie good to see you appreciate you being here we're gonna add our she says look Luke, Luquas should be measured in a glass measuring cup yes they should and i did to, to rosie's point rosie's my mom for those of you that don't know use a glass measuring cup i have that are we having to, oh we're on what's going on folks back there we're frozen. Okay, are we still? All right. Well, YouTube is going. Okay. Well, we'll just keep going. Well, anyways, as we were, uh, we're adding uh, to Rosie's point. We are going to use the uh, glass measuring cup. I use the the metal one, but this is preferred. Totally agree. Just didn't have it in front of me. We're gonna add our garlic to this. I added the garlic after the lemon because I wanted to make sure that there was enough moisture in the pan so the garlic doesn't burn. There's a lot of, there's a lot of naturally occurring sugars in the, in the garlic and it can easily burn with that, with that heat. So we've got that going, got just beautiful aroma. It smells fantastic. We're going to add our salt and pepper. We're going to add our salt and pepper to it. And next, I'm going to add our fresh mint. And you can see here, we got just, I can, like, just the heat that's emanating off the pan to the, to the, to the mint just smells wonderful. So I am going to take this mint, and if you want to use any questions, comments, yeah, Jackie. Oh, they're, they're, say they're still live, so we're live. Okay, going. good. Well, um, we just, we're, we're live, live, but we just had some, uh, some issue with that. I don't know what that's about. Uh, but it does smell incredible, and we're going to, go ahead, go for it. We're going to add our herbs what i was going to say what i was what i was going to say everybody how you doing <laughs> what i was going to say is is if you want to use dried herbs that's just fine you know there's enough moisture and heat in here that the heat's gonna bring out the flavors of those dry herbs and that's just fine but i like to use the fresh herbs and we're gonna add that we're gonna add that right uh you know in just a second because this is basically this is almost done I actually I just realized that I uh, I kind of went over a step or two but that's okay we're gonna take some of this pasta water here Johnny your face was sticking out that's funny we're gonna Boy. add the pasta water okay we're gonna add that we're good a little dash of more beautiful how's that looking there folks we're gonna add our pasta back in there you know what I would I think this would be a great time to let's uh, no this would not be a great time to no graphics, no graphics. just kidding we're gonna keep going we're uh, we're, we're a ship without a rudder not just kidding we're, uh, we're doing fine but anyways um, so we've got our we added our liquid here and I've got a few extra a few extra Utensils that I don't need. Questions, okay, comments, yes, thoughts. We have a lot of comments. Good. Uh, Bring on the see. comments, folks. It's exactly what we want. Uh, Dominic, I, yep. Go can on. I? I gotta add the lemon zest. This was something that I was excited about, and I got all carried away with juicing the lemons. I forgot to talk about that. Here's the thing, folks. When you come, when it comes to lemon zest, the zest is, and you can use just because I. It'll be easier if you do it this way. But just for being practical, I'm gonna show you both. Um, and show you how easy it is to do it this versus this. But lemon zest is the zest is the outside skin. There's these little oil pores, and it'll bring out so much flavor and aroma into your dish. And you can zest 
using one of these. It's a little cumbersome and it's not the best tool to use, but I have done it when I don't have anything else. You can, you know, there's other versions of, this is like more of a focus for cheese graters, but you could use it. Certainly, well, this one broke, but you could use a zester like this and you could use a zester like this. And I actually, I lost this for two years and I just found it today and I was really excited. So you want to get the zest off because it's going to bring the aroma and it's just going to be fantastic. Okay, there were some, a lot of questions. I'm going to let you do, let you do uh, your questions and stuff. Uh, Jackie says, smells so delicious. We just mixed the last bit. Still live here too, okay? Uh, awesome. See. Jackie, please take a picture next time. Yes. Take a picture this time. Sharon wants to know, it. thoughts on using fresh lemon juice? Oh, that was going to talk about that. Yeah. To oppose, oppose to bottle. Yes, um, I'm going to answer that question, Sharon, because that was something I wanted to say. The... The, uh, the zest, you know, again, the tool, like the tools you have make it easy and the way you prepare are going to make it easy. This is so much easier to zest as a whole item versus a, the rind of something you just juice. So really keep that in mind. All right, this smells amazing. Okay, we, uh, Sharon had the question about bottled versus fresh. I like to go fresh whenever possible because the bottled stuff, it's concentrated, it's meant to be shelf stable, it's meant to have, uh, it's, you know, it's meant to last forever and, and there's, it just doesn't have the, the, it doesn't have the flavor we we're looking for and I don't really, I don't know, I don't like the flavor frankly. Also, if you ever have suffer from headaches or you have digestive sensitivities, there are some preservatives in that in that lemon juice concentrate shelf stable stuff that could possibly affect you so you might want to pay attention to that um, so I always go fresh whenever possible this is done we are like we are ready to Amy is asking do we put in the squeezed lemon this. juice as well yes I put it in I got excited I put it in a little before but it absorbs into the to the noodles we're set uh, last finishing touches so we did our zest we did our juice earlier as I said I did the broth you know the water the pasta water we're gonna add in the fresh mint it's gonna be great and we're gonna add some crushed red pepper okay super tasty I'm gonna also add the remaining olive oil because I have divided the olive oil and I'm gonna be honest I forgot why I divided the olive oil so I'm gonna add that in there at the end this just looks absolutely looks good. beautiful and I'm really excited about how this is, folks. Okay, check this out. How's that looking, folks? How's that looking? What do you think? I like it. Who else is cooking tonight? Dominic, Jackie, Teresa, Tess, Teresa. Love Sharon. it. Sharon, love it. How are you? How's it going out there? How are you tasting? What other questions? What other questions do you have for me? This is done. Looks great. We are good. We are good. Are you guys still uh, KO'd back there? Okay. All right. That's okay. <laughs> We're just going to keep going. I'm going to serve up. Uh, Jana. Steve you... says yum. Tess yum. says delicious. Awesome. So here's a couple things I want you to think about is the fresh herbs at the end kind of really like sort of are like a bow tie on the flavors with the lemon zest and, and with that mint. Okay. And then... And then um, another thing is, you know, there's going to be little differences when you're cooking with fresh uh, Brussels sprouts versus frozen fr Brussels sprouts. It's still going to work great. You know, definitely, you know, I, I would do either way. Um, but when you use the, the fresh, the texture is going to be a little bit different. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then also I want you to think about the benefits of, you know, having, using the pasta water from a flavor standpoint and helping just kind of get the, get everything tied together along with the flavors. So that looks dynamite. Take a look at that, my friends. Beautiful. Jonna, you wanted to say? Oh, what am I? So Teresa said it's a little yeah, more it's... lemony than you would, than you would like. Totally get it. I'm going to give it a taste myself here. Other oh, questions, no. comments, thoughts. No. Folks, make sure that you are, uh, You've, you're, you're, uh, you've liked our fan page here. Please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. I want to make sure that we get, you know, we, you can uh, participate on demand and stuff. Get our recipes. Let's get a taste. Mmm. 
This is super Domin awesome. Dominic oh my says, I use the regular oil to cook, added some fancy mm. olive oil at the end, gives it a buttery texture. This is dynamite. This is dynamite. I suppose I should not be eating while I'm doing this thing. This is awesome. Wow. You could also garnish with a little fresh mint if you want at the end. All right, I think I got everybody's questions answered. Sharon made it yesterday, finished the leftovers this evening. She loved it. Good. Good, good, she good. Will use lemons. Yes, on. definitely use fresh lemon next time. Want, Folks, what's that? There's another frozen. Do you want to? Oh, you know what? I love that point. So, one of the things you can do, you know, we've got, I've got these huge lemons, and normally, a typical lemon will give you a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of of juice. These things are like the signs of oranges, and they gave us, as you saw, you know, or over a quarter cup of juice. That's not typical. Still tastes great. It's just not the typical. So that's where you want to be mindful of, you know, how much are the quantities? Are you measuring them out? Do you feel comfortable with that? And so on and so forth. But to BK's point, juice your lemons. And then you could put them in ice cube trays or put them in little, you know, however you want to you know, store that lemon juice, pop it in the freezer, and now you can take it out and you have lemon, uh, fresh frozen lemon juice ready to go. And I think that's just a super awesome idea. You know, I don't do that enough and I, and I, I, I talk about it. I, I love that idea. It's just great. Thank you for bringing that up. That's a great idea. Yes. Um, tip, Tess has tip you know, for everyone. I, I can juggle too. You want to see me juggle? Sure, go ahead. No, go ahead. Talk the here. I'm gonna I'm gonna juggle these while Tess is. Uh, oh, okay. I don't want to look glass. at that. With the there glass. There you go. Okay, All go right. ahead. Sorry, I figured everything's falling apart tonight. Why not just do some more? <laughs> what was Tess saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we have discovered the contraption called the pasta pasta cooks pasta so much faster. <laughs> Used in microwave. I never thought I would cook pasta in the microwave, but now do it all the time. That is a first. I appreciate that. That's cool. Are you getting a commission off those sales? That was good. I love it. All right, folks. Well, we had a uh, super delicious event-filled uh, class tonight, show tonight. Super appreciate all your participation. Folks, make sure, please, that you're following us on Instagram at Chef Marshall O'Brien, obviously uh, Facebook, Chef Marshall O'Brien, and on our YouTube channel, Chef Marshall's Cooking with Confidence. Uh, do me a big favor, let your friends know, let your family know, let your friends' family know, so we can keep growing this. Uh, love doing it, you know, more importantly, more importantly, I love being able to help all of you make great tasting and nourishing meals in your kitchens send us your pictures because when our technology is working we're going to show you those pictures sorry guys we're going to show you the highlights and give you a shout outs and it's just fun to you know it's a fun way to to uh to celebrate these great delicious and nourishing things that you're doing with me all right folks that's all we got for for uh, tonight anything else that you want to yeah, say there's still coming ours is just a, amanda, amanda says ours is just done oh one Smells delicious. Awesome. And she says, Thank you. Steve snap those pictures. Get yes, out your phone, snap do. the pictures, send it in. Put it in the comments below. It's going to be great. Says, great show. Thank you. Next week, we are going to do balsamic chicken stir fry. Super tasty. Uh, it's uh, I, I'm really excited to do that one, just like I was excited to do this one. So please tune in next Thursday, 5.30, every Thursday night, 5.30 p.m. Oh. Central Standard Time. Rain or shine, I think there's a blizzard right now here. Or maybe no, it's past, I don't know. Oh, no. Nimet, thank you. Choc sevior Nimet. Mwah. All right, folks, that's all we got. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your dish, and we will see you next week, everybody. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. How do we turn off the camera?